Hey, this is Gulami Kars. I'm really thankful to those who requested me to make videos on the subject advanced mathematics trigonometry. Here in this video, we will discuss some of the very basic terms which are useful to learn nicely trigonometry. And those are angles in a quadrant, triangle of reference, concept of negative angles and the trigonometric ratios of negative angles. So let's begin the discussion. Yes, I have changed my channel from Mathematically Mathematics Mathematics to MMM Classroom with Sir ZB. Now you can search me on YouTube by typing MMM Classroom with Sir ZB. Before discussing this angle in a quadrant, let us first of all know how can we get an angle in trigonometry. Let us consider a ray here of OA. And let me rotate this ray OA with respect to the point O in either direction, that is in anti-clockwise direction or in clockwise direction. In this case, let me rotate this ray OA with respect to the point O in anti-clockwise direction to get a new position OA dash. Now you can see here in this initial position of the ray and in the final position of the ray we get an angle A dash OA. Because this is the initial position of the ray so this OA is called initial side of angle A dash OA and because this is the final side of the ray so this OA dash is called terminal side of angle A dash OA so this is the way we get an angle in trigonometry now let us discuss angle in a quadrant So we know we get this quadrant in coordinate geometry and especially in a coordinate plan. So let me draw a coordinate plan where we have x dash o x as x axis and y o y dash as y axis. Let me regard o x as initial side and o a as a terminal side to form an angle that is angle AOX. Look at here, this is the suppose this is the angle, angle AOX. Here the initial side is OX and the terminal side is OA. And this terminal side lies in the first quadrant, and that is why the angle AOX is called it is an angle in the first quadrant. Let me draw another initial uh, terminal side OB where the initial side again is OX. Then we are getting another angle BOX. BOX. Because the final uh, or terminal side of the angle BOX, that is BO, lies in the second quadrant. So, the angle BOX is called, it lies in the second quadrant, that is angle BOX is in the second quadrant. Uh, again, suppose we have another ray, OC, where OX is again the initial side, and I am assuming, I am regarding OC as the terminal side. Then again, we are getting an angle, angle COX. This is the angle COX, means this one, okay? Because the terminal side of angle COX lies in the third quadrant, so angle COX will be called as an angle of third quadrant. Similarly, if I draw another ray, suppose OD, to form this angle, angle DOX, where OX is 
the initial side and OD is the terminal side because the terminal side of this angle DOX lies in the fourth quadrant so angle DOX is called that it is an angle in the fourth quadrant so this is the way we can get an angle in a particular quadrant where you have to remember the initial side should always be OX okay and the terminal side in whichever quadrant the terminal side lies that angle is called is in that particular quadrant now let us discuss the triangle of reference look at the figure here we have an angle a1 ox that is theta1 and there's a point p1 on the ray oa1 and p1 m1 is perpendicular to ox this is the first quadrant so if we have to find the trigonometric ratios with respect to the acute angle theta1 it is acute because it lies in the first quadrant then we have to consider the triangle P1 O M1. So this triangle P1 O M1 in this particular case is called the triangle of reference. Suppose you are to find the trigonometric ratios of obtuse angle. We know obtuse angle which are greater than 90 less than 180. So the terminal side will lie definitely in the second quadrant. Let this is the angle which is say theta 2 and the ray is O2. This is the terminal side. Again you have to consider a point like P1. Let that be P2. What you have to remember you have to remember that the, the, the point must lie on the terminal side of the angle. Here, O A2 and the angle is theta2. And you have to draw a perpendicular from the point P2 always, always on X axis only. Let the perpendicular be P2 M2. Now, if you are to find sine theta 2, cos theta 2, tan theta 2, which is an obtuse angle, you have to consider the triangle O, P2, M2. So, in this case, triangle O, P2, M2 is called the triangle of reference. If you are to find the trigonometric ratios of greater than 180 but less than 270, Okay. then your triangle of reference will lie on this third quadrant. Similarly, you can draw the triangle of reference. And if you are to find the trigonometric ratios more than 270 degree, less than 360 degree, your triangle of reference will lie definitely in the fourth quadrant. Okay. So how can we draw the triangle of reference? Remember, the point like P1 and P2, these points should always be on the terminal side of the ray. Okay? And you have to draw the perpendicular from that particular point to the x-axis only. Do you understand? So this is the way we get the triangle of reference. Okay? If you cannot get the triangle of reference, you cannot get the trig trigonometric ratios of that particular angle. Let us discuss now the trigonometric ratios of negative angles. But before that, we have to know what is a negative angle. Because we don't have the concept of negative angle in geometry. So what is a negative angle? When an angle is formed by rotating our ray with respect to a fixed point in anti-clockwise direction, that angle is regarded as a positive angle. When an angle is formed by rotating our ray with respect to a fixed point in clockwise direction, then the angle is regarded as negative angle. Look at the figure here. 
This angle AOX is formed by rotating it in anti-clockwise direction with respect to O. So this angle theta, that is AOX, would be regarded as a positive angle. In the other case, in this case, this angle XOA dash is formed by rotating this ray in clockwise direction. So this angle XOA dash will be regarded as a negative angle. Okay? Now let us find the trigonometric ratios of negative angles. So to find the trigonometric ratios of negative angles, we are considering here two angles AOX and A dash OX, both are of equal magnitude. Okay? So angle uh, AOX equals angle A dash OX equal in magnitude, let it be theta. We are considering two point P and P dash on the ray OA and OA dash respectively in such a way that OP equals OP dash. Let me join these two points so that it cuts the x-axis at the point M. Now, you can look at, we are getting two triangles here, no? One is P, O, M, other is P, dash, O, M. And these two triangles are congruent to each other. How? It is very easy to find. As per our assumption, O, P equals O, P, dash. These two are equal. And this angle equals this angle, both are theta. Also, this side OM equals OM, that is the common side. So I know you can very easily prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other by side angle side criteria. Okay, so I'm not proving it, you can prove it yourself. So therefore, we can write triangle POM is congruent to triangle P dash OM by the criteria SAS. So therefore, by CPCT, that is corresponding sides of con congruent triangles are always equal. So we have PN equals P dash N. Also, angle PMO, PMO equals angle P dash MO. That means this angle PMO equals P dash MO. These two angles are equal. But as P and P dash, is a straight angle that is 180 degree so each will get because both are equal so each will get 90 degree that means these two triangles are right triangles okay so these are right triangles again you see the point p dash lies in the fourth quadrant so, by the sign convention of, you know, coordinates, that is FC sign ordinate, in the fourth quadrant, we know that the FC uh, ordinate, this is FC sign, this is ordinate, ordinate is always negative. So, we have P dash M is negative because the point P dash lies in the fourth quadrant. So, because P dash M is negative and we have uh, P dash M equals PM so P dash M must be equal to minus PM do you understand all these things okay now let me find the trigonometric ratios of negative angles so in that case I have to consider the two right triangles that is POM and P dash OM first of all let me consider this triangle P O M. Let me find sine ratio of theta from this triangle. This triangle. So sine theta will be opposite side of the angle, opposite side by hypotenuse, that is uh, P M by O P. What about cosine theta? 
adjacent side by hypotenuse, as we all know, so it is OM by OP. Now let me consider this triangle that is O, P dash M or P dash O M. Now from P dash O M right triangle, let me find sine of negative theta. Again it will be P dash M opposite side by hypotenuse, P dash M by O P dash. Uh, what about P dash M? P dash M, we have found it as negative P M by OP dash, what is OP dash? OP dash equal to OP, so this is equal to negative PM by OP, so there is negative PM by OP is sine theta, negative sine theta. So sine negative theta is negative sine theta. Let me find what will be the cos negative theta. Cos negative theta. Let me find cos negative theta. Cos negative theta will be at the same side by hypotenuse, that is OM by OP dash. So this will be OM by OP dash, as we know that OP dash equals OP. So what is OM by OP? This is cos theta. So it is cos theta. So cos negative theta is positive cos theta. When you find the sine ratio and cosine ratio of an angle, we can find the rest of the ratios very easily. So this is all about the uh, trigonometric ratios of negative angles. So that's it for today. We definitely will meet very soon. Thank you very much.